I just spent $10,000 on this massive comic book grail that's inside this box. Not only is it a big time value, it's also a big time box. I mean, they might as well package this like it was, you know, gold or something. <laughs> you know, <laughs> crazy. You're going to want to stick around to the end of the video to see what's inside and also to see a bonus book I'm going to show for my personal collection. Let's talk about where I got this comic book. So there is an online website called Comic Link. They run comic book auctions and they also have like buy it now comic books. And as someone as myself who buys big grails or first appearance keys, I like to watch their auctions a lot of the time just to see because they have a lot of rare and hard to find comic books inside. I've actually had a copy of this comic book before and I it was a lower grade and I like to get at least you know a certain grade level depending on what age the comic book is and so I sold that copy to buy up into this copy so it meets the grade requirement that I want so it's still really exciting to have this book back and before you know we get too far in make sure to say down in the comments take your guesses what do you think it is as far as mega grails go for ten thousand dollars so I'm guessing this is like box in a box in a box because I've had other boxes that come this big as far as uh, comic book deliveries and they all were like inception style <laughs> box within a box within a box so it's gonna take a little while for those who are, who are new to the channel I love all things comic books and mainly I like to collect vintage like golden age books <gasps> packing peanuts my girls will love them. And this fits along those lines. So there's a hint for you. Golden Age Vintage Book. And I'm more of a DC fan also than I am Marvel. I love both. Obviously Marvel movies are better. I mean, come on DC, what are you doing? Seriously. Best movie, Dark Knight, for sure. But that's been like 100 years since you released that. And ever since then, <clears throat> I mean, The Flash... <laughs> Are you kidding me? Did you see that? Let me know in the comments what you thought of that. I thought it was horrendous. I digress. Yes! It's alive! Oh, man. Ooh, so much dust from the packing. Units. I'm going to have this all over my clothes for like a week. Okay. Box number two. I do hope that James Gunn can turn around the DC universe, though, because overall, DC, I think, has better superheroes because they just have a, you know, they have a depth of superheroes like big ones. You think of the big superheroes, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, you know, all DC. Obviously, Spider-Man, Marvel, but to me, after that, there's a big drop-off as far as well-known or really big superheroes that are known by most people. Paper. Box within a box. Yeah, so comic my comic shop, I bought this from them. It Oh yeah, I think I said Comic Link before. No, I didn't buy this from Comic Link. I bought this from my comic shop. So my apologies. Not my my, not comic link it's my comic shop dot com in my comic shop they do do auctions from time to time but most of the time their stuff is like buy it now or like best offer and that was one of the case with this comic so i went back and forth with the seller quite a bit on this comic before it was accepted and i'm glad that it was because so i'm excited to have it back One last piece of tape stands between us and this comic. The bubble wrap. The cheap plastic bag. The Gemini box. I'll pick that up later. Or pay my kids to do that. Even better. So, big reveal. This is a big book. $10,000. It is Detective Comics number 140, the first appearance 
of the Riddler. <laughs> Man. Wow. Just look at that book. I mean, and the great thing about this book in particular is, for those of you who are familiar with Golden Age books, well, a lot of the time your first appearances, the character's not on the cover. That's what makes this one even that much sweeter is the fact that the Riddler is actually on the cover for his first appearance, which is which is really cool. And it's such a great cover because, you know, he's focal point, front and center. This book is in a 4.5 off-white to white pages. Yeah, off-white to white. Just a great book. Let me try to zoom in on it. Yeah, this is, wow. I mean, I like to have my... Golden Age books to be at least a 4.0 or higher with off-white or better pages. So 4.5, that's a great grade. I did have a 3.0 grade of this before. That was from the DC Universe collection. And thanks to Ryan from Automatic Comics for hooking me up with that book. <laughs> that was awesome. Make sure to follow him if you don't or subscribe to his channel if you don't already. He gives lots of great information. But yeah, I traded that book or sold that book off and was able to pick up this book. Really glad to have this in the PC, in the personal collection, and whew, wow, just a major, major key. Who doesn't love the Riddler? Write in the comments below who your favorite Batman villain is, because yeah, Riddler's got to be up there for a lot of you, I'm sure. And with the new Batman movie, you know, the Robert Pattinson Batman movie, I thought, you know, R the Riddler portrayal, fantastic in that movie. So yeah, I'm excited <laughs> to own this book again. Let there be light. <laughs> All right. So now that we have this book, let's look at the bonus. Since we're on a DC villain kick, I figured why not introduce another DC villain? Not a big Batman villain, but a big villain for a superhero team known as the Teen Titans. So this is new Teen Titans number two. This is the first appearance of Deathstroke, which is arguably the arch nemesis of the Teen Titans. Pretty cool. This is a Bronze Age book. The reason I'm showing this is it's very similar to the Detective Comics 140, where I had a lower grade copy and I upgraded. So I used to have a 7.5 of this book that I sold and then upgraded because with Bronze Age books, I want at least an 8.0 or better. And I know that this is a very high grade. This is a 9.6. That's way above the 8.0. The reason I went even higher than an 8.0 is this book is not super expensive because it's not super rare. There are a lot of copies out in existence. So this book cost me like, I think $300 is what it ended up costing me. So not huge. And it, that was to me worth it for the price difference between an 8.0 and 9.6. Since it's not that massive, I went ahead and I upgraded to a 9.6. 9.8 to me was a little too much because especially in a newsstand uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with newsstands that's uh, where in the lower corner for a lot of books or a lot of the Bronze Age and newer books are uh, they have a barcode in the lower corner because they started doing a subscription service where they would mail the comics to you directly instead of just buying them at the store like you did back in the day so I like to collect exclusively if there are newsstand editions of comics. I like exclusively to pick up the newsstands. And newsstand copies, especially in higher grades, like 9.6, but even more so 9.8, command very high prices because, first of all, in general, they're rarer. I know not all cases, but a lot of cases, most cases, I would say, the 9.8 or the newsstand version is going to be rarer than the direct edition. And you can tell if it's direct or it's a mailed, you know, a mailed subscription copy is if this barcode isn't there. You know, the barcode was just a scan to check you out at the store. If this barcode is replaced with like a DC logo or in Marvel's case, like a Spider-Man, that's a direct edition. So a 9.8 in a newsstand is price prohibitive for me. So I just decided to go with a 9.6, which is to me a sweet spot for this book. But yeah, first appearance of Deathstroke which is the main villain, in my opinion, for the Teen Titans. And I would say probably most people would say that as well. So yeah, really cool book. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for the giveaways that I'm about to announce. Also comment down below, am I crazy for spending $10,000 on a comic book? Let me know.